Hello, my crafty friend. I'm Kim from Brimfield Awakening, and we are going to be making the perfect pincushion today. This is an English paper piecing project. This project is super easy, and what I like best about it is you can make it from anywhere, even the bleachers from your kid's baseball game, where I find myself a lot lately. And you know what? I like crafts that you can make on the go. This way, you're never bored anywhere you're at. Before we dive into it, let me introduce you to Hexaform Leave-In EPP Hexagons. Now, we normally use these squishy leave-in EPP hexes in our kits, but today we will be using traditional cardstock hexagons, so don't sweat it. But let me tell you about the beauty of Hexaform because it behaves exactly like the cardstock, but the magical twist to it is they stay inside. You don't have to take them out. This saves you a ton of time in your EPP. Plus they're kind of plump and they're squishy and they're very forgiving. Who doesn't like something like that? Plus you're allowed to stitch into them a little bit, something you can't do with cardstock. So if you ever decide to go down EPP Avenue or the rabbit hole, you might want to consider giving Hexaform a try. And when you do, give us a call. Now let's talk materials. You'll need a fat quarter of fabric you adore, a marking pen or pencil, choose the shade depending on your fabric, scissors, a milliner's needle, and a trusty thread. I've got Deco Bob 80 weight. Also, don't forget a glue pen. I'm using Soline. For stuffing, grab some wadding. You'll also need eight cardstock hexagons. And if you want to add a touch of flair, consider a window acrylic template and a hole punch. The acrylic and the hole punch are optional. However, if you do choose to put a hole punch and punch a hole in your hexes ahead of time, you'll be able to remove them from your project a little easier than if you don't. The window acrylic is nice because it speeds up the cutting out of your fabric plus seam allowance, and it also makes seeing the fussy cut a lot easier. But if you don't have one of these window acrylics, don't sweat it. I'm gonna show you how to make one of your own window templates out of cardstock that you might have laying around the house a little bit later on in the process. It's all about what works best for you. Now let's move forward and talk about the first steps to make your perfect pincushion. Start by using a window template to help you trace and fussy cut your eight hexes. On this fabric that I'm using, I'm gonna be tracing and fussy cutting the foxes, the bunny rabbits, the adorable mushroom house. And then I'm also gonna be tracing kind of a blank area without a lot going on for my eyes to rest with just the foliage. Now remember, your window template already has the seam allowance included in there. Then we're gonna glue base the fabric to the hexes one by one. Try to live by the mantra, less is more, because you'll be needing to take these cardstock hexes back out and the less glue you use, the easier that's going to be. Be sure to leave a tiny dry pocket between the glue and the template edge, because that is where you're gonna be sticking your needle in and out. And if you have a dry pocket there, there won't be any glue to gum up your needle. Now, for stitching our hexes together, we're gonna to be employing a stitch called the whip stitch. You've probably heard of this. This is how you start. Now, some people will start by knotting their thread ahead of time. I prefer to make my knot on the fly. I found that sometimes when I knot my thread ahead of time, I'll actually pull it through. So this is how I'm doing my knot, and you can see this in the video. I poke my needle through the very corners of the fabric and I'm careful not to catch any cardstock. I leave a little loop behind and then I bring my needle back through that loop and sometimes it makes a bit of a figure eight. If that happens, it's even better. When I bring my needle through that figure eight loop, it makes a knot all on its own. Now I'll bring my needle back to the side from where I started and I'll go about a sixteenth of an inch farther down. I will poke the needle through both pieces of fabric and you can see how the whip stitch keeps going. I'll go all the way across the seam and then I'll end by tying off a knot the same way in which I started. That's how you do the whip stitch. Now that you know how to do a whip stitch, it's time to sew together a grandmother's flower garden flower. It has one hexi in the center with six hexes attached to it. 
This next part is going to be a little strange, but you're gonna to have to just trust the process. After you have stitched your grandmother's flower garden flower, it's time to stitch those sides of the hexes together. This is going to cause them to bend upward. And with the cardstock inside, it's going to feel really weird and awkward, but just proceed and trust that it's going to work out in the end. Now let's continue with the next phase of crafting our pincushion. You might be wondering why we've stitched our hexes together like this. At this point, you'll have an inside out pincushion with seven hexes sewn together with an opening at the top. Take your last hexi, whip stitch it to the opening right sides together on three sides. Then carefully remove the papers and turn the pincushion right side out. This is where having that hole in your hexes is really helpful. It's going to feel a bit strange, but keep trusting the process. Once you have it right side out, it's time to stuff the pincushion. Fill it to perfection and then whip stitch or slip stitch the remaining three sides closed. Now it's probably best to try to match up your thread to your fabric at this point because it's going to be a little difficult to hide those stitches. Okay, if you don't have any acrylic window templates, but you need a window template, you want one, I'm gonna show you a super fun hack to your mail pile that's going to save the day. So go get ready to raid that junk mail that's sitting in a pile over there and let's get to work. Grab one of those cards you might find in your mailbox, like those political mailers and real estate postcards that come in the mail every week. They make fantastic EPP papers and viewfinders. Take one of these cards and a one inch hexi and trace it onto the cardstock. Then add a three eighth inch or a quarter inch frame around it. Honestly, it doesn't have to be exact. It just needs to be big enough to wrap fabric around it for glue basting. Now cut it out and don't forget to cut out the center of your hexi to make it a window. Voila, now you have a window template you can use to audition fussy cuts and you can use it to trace fabric plus seam allowance for your perfect pincushion. And here she is. How do you like those fussy cuts? I love how this turned out. I love the fabric that Angie sent me to use, and this was so much fun to make. I literally made this in an evening, and you can do this too. They make great holiday gifts, great swap gifts. You know what to do. Now get to work. So with a bit of patience and practice, you can make these perfect pin cushions yourself. If you have found this tutorial helpful and fun, I hope you will follow us on Instagram. We are at Brimfield Awakening. Also, we hope you'll sign up for our newsletter through our Instagram profile link in the drop down menu. And if you want to give Hexaform a try, you can find it at brimfieldawakening.com. Big shout out and thank you to Angie at Five Little Monkeys Quilting for having us today and collaborating with us. She is so much fun. We met her when we launched our business so many years ago, and it's always fun seeing what she's up to. Until next time, happy crafting and creating, and come join us on the EPP rabbit hole. We'll see you down there.